Star Citizen's latest update, Alpha 3.13, it's actually pretty light on content, but there's actually quite a bit more going on with the patch cycle. So what have we got to look forward to over the next couple of months? At the end of May, we have Fleet Week. This is one of the most major yearly events for Cloud Imperium and Star Citizen since last year anyway. Based on last year's event, you can expect the main focus of Fleet Week to primarily be on military and combat ships and support ships, as well as recruitment. This is underlined with a in-game expo this year, supposedly around Microtech and New Babbage. You'll be able to visit the expo hall there by taking the train network there. Once at the location, every day or two, a new ship manufacturer or manufacturers will take over the hall and have their various ships on display. And you'll be able to try as many as you want for free. Sometimes Drake like to crash the party with their own little expo hall on a little side area. So we'll have to see if that's the case again or if they join the main hall proper. There's normally a free fly event at the same time, giving everyone the ability to try Star Citizen for free throughout the expected 10-day event. It's also likely that this will come with some form of referral scheme, maybe. Uh, recruit someone and get some ships type of deal. They have that already, but they like to have a more specific one to encourage players to um, actively refer players and get them to join and buy a game package um, during that period. Last year, we also had the UE Navy flying around in-game as part of that event, kind of a parade with fireworks going off as they flew past some major stations and docked with them. Last year's Fleet Week was, in fact, one of the best experiences I've ever had in Star Citizen, as we were able to steal the Navy ships, and it was the first time that we've seen the Javelin and Idris moving around and fighting in-game, and people fought with them, blew them up, were able to, as I said, steal these capital ships and mess around with them. It was glorious, though lots of it was unintended and lots of it was patched out. People still broke them, people still destroyed them, people still ran them into planets, people still got all these Idris and Javelins and fought them. Uh, I love things that you can do in game that the devs don't necessarily intend and these big events, that's, that's the time to do this stuff. Also, I know that last year, Cloud Imperium had a lot planned for Fleet Week that just wasn't ready. They wanted to have things like flybys of the fleet planet side and, and lots more going on. Star Citizen is a lot more developed and better prepared for events like this since last year, and especially since 3.12 and the Xenothreat stuff. So this brought dynamic event tech, which they can turn on and off very easily, and we could see a much more of a developed event this year with the new features and tech that they've got into Star Citizen. A massive part of the hype for the event and Star Citizen's monetization model are ship sales. Um, and these are a big part of Fleet Week. We um, should see these parroted by what current manufacturer is displaying their ships in the Expo Hall with the purchasable ships on the RSI website. And uh, as I said, this should be combat, military and support ships and vehicles. You could see some large packages, you could see some deals. And along with that, we could probably expect some new ships, potentially some straight to flyable and or concept ones as well. So um, five second spoiler. Star Citizen leaks have talked about the possibility of a Crusader Star Bomber. That's very possible that it could turn up during Fleet Week. Just sort of makes sense. There could be some other new parts of Fleet Week as well, and I'm extremely excited for it. So um, typically they have some competitions going on around these events as well, like screenshot competitions and stuff that you can get involved with. So um, make sure that you are ready towards the end of May for Fleet Week. We have a 3.13.x patch or patches planned um, for the 3.13 cycle. At least one of them is likely to come out uh, for Fleet Week because that just makes sense because there's new content during Fleet Week. It makes sense that they'll get a patch as it's released. Uh, but there's a load missing from the 3.13 initial live build that's planned to turn up before June as part of the 3.13 cycle. The Nova Tonk. So, the Nova Tank, it's a large main battle tank and the most powerful ground vehicle that's currently planned for the game currently, that we know about anyway, though I suppose it's arguable that the right vehicle for the right job and right situation is better. Maybe you want to take out a fighter that's approaching, or maybe a ballista would be better. We know that it will take multiple smaller vehicles to threaten a tank, um, and we do have some new ground gameplay in 3.13, though I'm not sure if it's enough to make use of the tank properly anyway. Um, it's certainly going to be something that's spawned a lot by players that want to run their own little events and do something cool and drive around and maybe get a little bit of ground gameplay in there, but um, there's not a huge amount at the moment driving that ground gameplay. As soon as there's NPCs on the surface of planets protecting sort of outposts and stations, that'll be a lot better. 
Uh, to help carry such large vehicles, we have the Hercules Starlifter C2 and its more armoured military variant, the M2. These are large cargo hauling vessels suitable for carrying massive vehicles, like the tank plant side, and I assume the blister. In fact, they can carry two tanks, um, so that's pretty cool, but they can also cargo haul and that's one of the other things and um, you can have loads of small vehicles you can cargo haul um, you could uh, have a couple of tanks you could do a mixture of that expect these to be highly adopted by players that want to do trade that involves landing on planets or moons as it's a bit sturdier as a ship and more suited for atmosphere than say a caterpillar in my opinion though we won't know for sure until it's in our hands i mean it could be terrible uh, for everything um for, for all we know so and we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Very, very hyped about it, though, because it's a ship that I have and I'm looking forward to. And I want to be able to bring tanks to planets. Um, I do want vehicle and ship spawning, though. I think that will make uh, this a lot more viable and useful. We have the bigger version of docking, ship to station docking, turning up. Uh, allowing for larger ships to be spawned and um, dock with space stations in-game and make use of their facilities. Uh, things like the Hull Sea that's coming in the future, they need ship to station docking before that gets in-game. But it allows a load of the larger ships in-game to actually make use of smaller stations and opens up a lot more gameplay for that. And things like cargo and local inventory and various other wider gameplay needs will benefit from this feature. Another less touted feature that should turn up is spawn closets. This allows NPCs to spawn and despawn out of sight in a room or a corner that isn't necessarily accessible by players. And basically it's supposed to be there for immersion, but it's also for gameplay mechanic purposes. This allows for security forces at landing zones and space stations, uh, reinforcements to be spawned in at outposts, and something more immersive than we currently have. It also allows NPCs there, like mechanics or going about their daily lives, to have somewhere to go and come out of that doesn't necessarily have them constantly being tracked. Because they, they go here, bam, they can um, defiscalize them, and then somewhere else they can come out, um, or a new one can spawn. Super important, probably didn't e don't even think about it a lot of the time, like, oh, yeah, we do need things like that. And that could lead to um, wave assaults at um, sort of certain locations. It could have security forces constantly spawning. It could lead to the relaxation, um, potentially even in 3.13.x, of the sort of um, green zones with FPS weapons. So you'll be able to very soon expected to be able to use your FPS weapons on stations, potentially on landing zones. And these features could also potentially come with some more gameplay and missions associated with them that Cloud Imperium have yet to confirm. These patches also typically contain bug fixes and balance tweaks, so better performance, your problems with your particular bugs and 30k errors and implosions of your PC, hopefully a lot of that will be dealt with with some bug fixes or obviously maybe not 30Ks. Maybe we'll just get some more stability. I'm very interested to know actually if people are having issues with 3.13 stability compared to 3.12. Are you finding servers more or less crashy? Are you getting more 30Ks? That's sort of what, what I'm asking there. So is there anything else as part of the 3.13 cycle? Well, the Nine Tails lockdown and other events are possibilities. Clan Imperium have talked about the Nine Tails lockdown as a Xeno threat type major event that will be using the new dynamic event system. We know that Cloud Imperium have another 8 to 10 events planned for this year. We can assume things like Fleet Week, CitizenCon, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo um, are some of those, uh, along with the Nine Tails lockdown. We don't know if there will be another event with 3.13 beyond Fleet Week, but it's very possible we could see one. And the one that's most likely, I suppose, would probably be the Nine Tails lockdown if it's in 3.13, though it's very possible that it's a 3.14 thing. Um, we're expecting areas of the Stanton system to get taken over or be otherwise locked down by Nine Tail Pirates, and they require players to get together and defeat a fleet or small groups of them, so like a mixture of missions and larger raids. Expect space stations to get effectively taken over by them until players turn up and deal with them. Things like that. That's more an assumption rather than a confirmation, though. We don't know 100% what's going on with the Nine Tails lockdown yet. Um, we do know that there's going to be one. We don't know when. We don't know exactly what form it will take. We've seen some leaks and stuff previously, but um, that stuff certainly can change. 3.13 could have some extra bits and pieces, new ships, other events, new gameplay and competitions as well, though. The next major patch is 3.14, and that's currently planned for the end of June. We will see the PTU phase for that 
probably mid-June with a target of a live build at the end of June. And as we saw with 3.13 though, they can delay a patch if they want, if it needs more work. And in the case of 3.13, that was three weeks delayed around. So and bear that in mind. Anyway, that's what to look forward to for the rest of the 3.13 cycle. But what do you think? What do you think we'll see at Fleet Week? Are you looking forward to the Hercules and the Tonk? Do you think anything else could turn up during the cycle? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you have questionable taste in anime? Do you not want internet pirates looting your internet search history? Do you want a way to have more accessibility to the internets from more countries? Or is your security and privacy important to you? Well, get NordVPN. I share for them and you should use the code board gamer or the links below for a discount try it out it's like a fleet of escort ships making sure your internet experience doesn't get griefed we have the April ship giveaway as well for a Mercury Star Runner. The ship is extremely multi-role and should be part of any budding citizen's fleet. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during the month. A random commenter will take that prize. These giveaways and the wider channel content are made possible by people that go the extra mile by becoming a Patreon or a YouTube channel member with that join button in the links below. And me and Zin, the editor for the channel, are now trying to put out regular exclusive content content as a thank you. We'll also be asking you in those videos to help shape the channel with uh, making decisions about what content we do and how we do it. Please consider joining if you're really enjoying the content, it really does help. Take care guys, thanks for watching, make sure you like and subscribe for more Star Citizen content and I'll see you in the verse.